Welcome to Snooze with Sam, and just before this week's story starts, I would like to just give this story to my grandmother, who passed away not too long ago. It's with a heavy heart that I say this again, because we've lost a few people in the recent weeks and months, but such is life, so it's just a gentle reminder to please love everyone around you because you never know when your time with that person may come to a conscious end, at least. It's a privilege that she was in the company of my auntie and uncle when she passed, and they actually played one of these stories to her um, the night that she passed away. I believe it was the Nessie story, so, <laughs> so this story goes to her, obviously. Sending all my love to all of our family, and I look forward to seeing you all soon as well. I'm going to go down to England in the next couple of days. So this one's for you, Sally. Thank you for everything you've done over the years. You're a wonderful grandmother, and the most loving person. This story is called Waking the Dragon. The incredible green light was almost blinding. It forced your hand up to cover your eyes. The sheer intensity of the emerald light emitting from its emerald eye was painful in the gloom of the cave. You couldn't make sense of what you were seeing. Before you was a dragon. Until a few minutes ago, you knew them to be only the product of myth and legend. Yet here you were, with one in front of your own eyes. Not in a book. Not a picture painted on the wall, or an ancient artefact. Not even in a fairy tale. In your world, magic was commonplace. It had been discovered and refined throughout the centuries, making it a valuable young skill to teach young witches and wizards.
But even once upon a time, people thought of spells, curses, and magical abilities to be the stuff of make-believe. And now look where you are. No one had believed that dragons were real. No one had ever witnessed any evidence of them even existing. You had to pinch yourself and screw your eyes up tight to make sure you weren't dreaming. But no, you were awake. You were in this enormous cave. Crouched behind a rock, beholding the Emerald Dragon, the most legendary creature in all the land. And it was waking up. What were sleepy snores were now more audible grunts and gruff rumbles. Its eyes were open, but it seemed to still be dazed and weary from its sleep. Maybe dragons need their morning coffee too. Should you try to leave before it fully woke? What if it saw you trying to escape? For all you know, this dragon had never seen a human before. How would it react? It looked friendly enough, as far as a big scaly lizard could. Not aggressive or intimidating like stories would have you believe. The spines running from its short nose up to above its eyes were about the only thing which you might Call scary. But this dragon had a calm and friendly aura about it, like a big dog that didn't know it was a big dog. You don't know why specifically, but you felt comfortable in its presence. 
You trusted it. This might have been the craziest, stupidest thing you'd ever done, but it felt right to do. Getting up from your crouch behind the rock, Keeping your eyes fixed on the dragon, which was now shuffling in its place. You stood up tall and made yourself perfectly visible. You held your breath, heart beating furiously against your chest. What were you doing? This was completely mad, but you were committed now. The dragon fussed a little more, grunting and moving fluidly, stretching like a cat after a long slumber. It hadn't seen you yet. As it moved, the room danced like a green disco. The emerald in place of its eye, spinning light around like a disco ball. Maybe you should get its attention. Do you say hello? Or excuse me? No, that would be silly. Perhaps you should cough slightly. You may not be interrupting a ministry meeting of high witches and wizards, but what else could you do? Taking a deep breath in and shuffling in your spot a little yourself. You cleared your throat gently in that inviting, conversational sense and waited for what came next. The dragon heard, spinning its head around in an instant, looking in your direction, eyes wide. You returned the gaze, 
barely allowing yourself to breathe. What was the dragon going to do now? There was silence in the cave. Stalemate. You waited and waited. Then you heard something. Was that a little wine? Before you could figure out the noise, the dragon leapt up like a flash, spun around, scrabbled against the rocks, and bounded behind a nearby rock and hid. Surely not. Was the dragon scared of you? You leaned to the left to see past the rock slightly. The dragon peered round the rock too. Just a single big eye showing. It met your gaze. Froze. And flinched back behind the rock again. You smiled to yourself, laughing a little. This poor wee dragon is frightened of me, you thought out loud. Time to put it at ease. Slowly, cautiously, you began to walk over to where the dragon was hiding, whispering little words of encouragement, tempting the gentle giant out. Again, the dragon sneaked a little glance, responding to your noises. This time, however, it didn't recoil in fear or shyness. Its big green eyes kept contact with your own. You held out a hand, offering it 
to the dragon, letting it know you meant no harm and you want a threat. Closer and closer you move, the dragon growing more and more curious by the second. Pausing in your stride. Just enough distance between you both to keep each other at ease. You kept your hand outstretched and waited. Finally, the dragon moved slowly out from its rock, obviously curious about you, and reached out its neck, sniffing your hand. It was figuring you out, trying to decide what you were, who you were. It puzzled for a second or two, eyes and ears twitching. Time seemed to go on forever. You felt like you hadn't breathed in minutes. At long last, the dragon let out a low, affectionate grumble and lowered its head, inviting you to touch it. You sighed in great relief giggling to yourself at the ridiculousness of this situation. Reaching a little further, you glided your hand over the beast's rough nose. Feeling the scales beneath your fingertips. It was like solid armour. You let your hands move across its face. Feeling every contour. The dragon seemed to like it. Deep powers thundering from its belly through the ground beneath your feet. This was exhilarating.
You laughed out loud, still unable to believe what was happening. You almost forgot about its emerald eye, despite the ever-present glow. You squinted and peered into it, noting the details of the rough jewel. It was not some precision cut gem you'd find in a jewellery shop. This was a solid lump of precious stone, which emitted such a natural shine, unlike any man-touched trinket. You were lost in the dragon's gaze when it shifted, breaking you from your trance. It put its head down low to the ground and tucked its wings back. You puzzled over what it was doing. It seemed to be suggesting you climbed on. Really? Surely not. Again, the dragon shuffled, keeping its head low, as if to affirm its point, providing a clear path onto the nave of its neck. Blinking again, convinced you are dreaming still. You chose not to hesitate any longer, and clambered up onto its back, using your hands and feet. Suddenly, you felt like a mere passenger. The sheer mass and strength of the dragon evident beneath you. Clinging on with the insides of your legs and gripping the beast's neck as firmly as you could, you waited for what you thought was coming.
more suspended silence, more shuffles and grunts from the dragon. Were you ready for this? You gulped with nerves and waited. Like a coiled spring, the dragon leapt into the air, spreading its wings wide, and flapped furiously to gain height. The explosion of energy took you by surprise, causing you to yelp a little and tighten your grip. You clung on for dear life. The dragon kept climbing, vast wings tearing through the air with such unimaginable power, and headed straight for the light in the roof of the cave. The hole didn't look big enough for a dragon to fit through. However, you trusted the dragon. You had to. You got closer and nearer until you couldn't bear to watch, so shut your eyes tight, conscious of the enclosing cave walls. But then, suddenly, all fell calm. Just the cold breeze rushing past you. When you opened your eyes, you were rocked with emotion. Before you was an endless horizon of moonlit ocean and islands, each one a little inky silhouette. The rain had gone, and there were now few clouds. The stunning full moon, casting great spells of light, shimmering across the sea.
It was truly beautiful, and you were astride the emerald dragon, soaring through the sky, making barely a whisper. You wondered where you would end up. Where were you going? Who knew? In this precise moment, you didn't care. If this was the very last experience you had, you would die happy. Settling back. Feeling comforted by the dragon beneath you. You cruised out to sea under the moonlight.